As Ruby continues to stare at the lich, she is shocked since Isaac isn't getting back up. She also starts to wonder about why he's not moving. She further believes that Isaac should be able to handle this much. This is because she's aware that he isn't just anyone, he's the male lead. Suddenly, Isaac starts to stare at Ruby with his red eyes. Ruby notices this and becomes stunned. She also starts to wonder about why Isaac is looking at her like that and if it's because he resents her. She further wonders if he feels like he's been played because of all the time they've spent together until now. We then learn that even so, Ruby sometimes had this thought that if she were to meet her death by Isaac's hands, then it wouldn't be so bad. All of a sudden, Ruby jumps out of her seat and shouts out, no, to Isaac. She also calls out his name while being in a panicked state. Upon Caesar noticing this, he grabs Ruby and tells her to get away from the shield. However, Ruby doesn't listen and keeps calling out to Isaac. Meanwhile, the lich notices this and starts to walk closer to Ruby, causing Isaac to become free. The priests notice this and can't believe that the lich is coming this way. They further realize that the spell isn't working and that the lich isn't stopping. Once the lich is close enough, it reaches out its hand to try to grab Ruby. Upon Cesar noticing this, he gets in front of Ruby and states to her that this isn't going how he wanted it to. He also starts to cast a spell on the lich. Suddenly, Caesar stops casting a spell. This is because he notices Ezek in the air, behind the lich. Ezek then stabs the lich from behind and gets a critical hit on the lich. Ezek continues to stab the lich until he stabs the lich's heart. This action causes a huge explosion in the Colosseum. Once the dust clears from the explosion, everyone looks at the arena and becomes shocked. This is because they notice that Ezek is still alive and has successfully slayed the lich. The crowd then starts to cheer for Ezek for his amazing victory. The announcer also shouts out, wiping out all the monsters in one go, as expected of Omerta. As the medics start to heal Ezek, the crowd further starts to chant, Omerta. Meanwhile, Ezek is looking really beat up and has blood all over his face. Ruby then starts to think about how, like she said, the ending is predictable. Caesar also turns towards Ruby and asks her if she's okay. Ruby is speechless upon hearing this question. Caesar further states to Ruby that she looked like she was about to faint a moment ago. Ruby ignores Caesar's question and questions him back about if this was his doing, allowing a lich to appear in the match. Caesar replies, The man who's going to be my dear sister's husband should at least be able to handle this much. Ruby, you don't have to worry about anything. Even after this match is over, your husband won't be able to do anything to you. Even if he heard about what happened yesterday. This response stuns Ruby. As she turns to face Caesar, she couldn't believe that he could push someone into a death trap and then casually bring up that horrifying event for her. She also realizes that he didn't feel a shred of guilt. Ezek then gets up on a horse. While riding on the horse, he turns his head to look at Ruby. Ruby notices this and starts to look back at him. As she's staring at Ezek, she starts to wonder about how he sees her now. She also wonders if he looks at her as the witch who dragged him down rather as the most noble princess in the world. Meanwhile, Isaac rides the horse to get close to Ruby. Ruby further starts to hold the guardrail and starts to wonder about if she asked Isaac to cut her down right here and end their relationship, would that be too selfish of her? Once Isaac is close enough to Ruby, he gives her the flower garland. This action surprises Ruby. Meanwhile, Isaac is smiling at Ruby while giving it to her. Upon Ruby noticing this, she tries to ask him about something. However, Isaac interrupts her and tells her that it's hers. She then takes the flower garland from Isaac. As she's holding it in her hands, she realizes that something she never once expected while she was alive, and something she couldn't even hope for, has been in front of her all along. Ruby also knows that some people spend their whole lives searching for it, some sing in hopes that it never changes. That thing. Sometimes doubts arise because of voices denying its existence. However, now she knows exactly what everyone's been searching for. What Isaac has been giving her all this time. She's certain of it now. As Ruby starts to cry, she realizes that this thing is called love. Ruby then wonders why she didn't realize it sooner, 
And what was it that blinded her? She further starts to cry even more. Isaac notices this and becomes slightly surprised. Meanwhile, Ruby starts thinking about how from the moment they first met, Isaac has always protected her and looked at her, comforted her, lifting the dark veil that shadowed over her, Isaac, who cared for her. Ruby also wonders why did she keep doubting over and over again? So many times, so many times, countless times. She further realizes that the hand Isaac always reached out so kindly. She was too busy foolishly pushing it away. As Isaac puts his hand on Ruby's cheek, Ruby starts to wonder about how can he keep reaching out to her, even after knowing everything. Even though she received so much from him and only ever thought of using him for her own safety, someone as selfish as her. Ruby also starts thinking about how, if she could stay by his side, even while she's still breathing, she wouldn't mind if she fell into hell. Because for the first time in her life, there's something she actually wants. We then transition to the next scene where we see Caesar taking Ruby somewhere. As Ruby is being dragged by Caesar, she states to him to wait a second. She also asks him about why is he acting like this all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Caesar is very serious and angry. We further see a flashback of when Isaac touched Ruby's cheek and notice that Caesar was shocked and very angry by Isaac's action. We are then back in the present, and Ruby questions her brother again about where exactly is he going. We also notice that someone is following them. We learn that it's Freya and Lorenzo following the siblings. Freya then calls out to Lorenzo and says, Isaac will be arriving at the banquet hall soon. Both Isaac and Ellen have been completely bewitched by that witch, so I have no choice but to help them out. This statement surprises Lorenzo and makes him feel uneasy. We then move to the next scene where we see what's going on at the banquet hall. Inside the banquet hall, Camus is shouting at Ivan and is telling him that Ruby's gone. She disappeared without a trace. Upon hearing this statement, Ivan mentions to Camus to keep his voice down. The red-haired knight agreed with Ivan and states to Camus that there are too many eyes watching. Ivan further confirms with Camus about if he's supposed to be guarding the front and what is he doing when he should have been standing guard. Camus disagrees with Ivan and tells him that when he arrived at the palace, both of them were definitely there. Upon hearing this statement, Ivan chuckles and mentions to Camus that he's losing his mind. Suddenly, someone calls out to Ivan. Ivan turns around to see who called him and realizes that it's Ellen. Ivan then questions Ellen about if she hasn't seen Ruby either. Ellen states to Ivan that she hasn't. She has been looking around. She also wonders why did the both of them have to disappear? All of a sudden, all the guests start to chant Omerta. This chant makes Ivan and Ellen flinch. They then turn around and realize that Isaac has arrived. As Isaac is walking towards them, the guests start to wonder about wasn't the champion supposed to enter last with the king? They also couldn't believe that he just walked in looking all beat up. Ivan then asks Isaac about if he's seriously coming here in that condition. However, Isaac ignores Ivan's question and questions him back about where's Ruby. He also starts to look around the banquet hall and questions his friends again about where is she. The red-haired knight mentions to Isaac that they're looking for her too. Upon hearing this statement, Isaac turns around to leave the banquet hall and look for Ruby. Ivan tries to stop Isaac, but he doesn't listen. As Isaac is walking towards the exit of the banquet hall, he notices Freya and Lorenzo by the exit. He further passes by them without giving them any attention. However, Freya stops Isaac and asks him if he's curious to know where his lovely wife went. This question makes Isaac halt. Ellen further says, I saw it clearly earlier. She was holding hands with her brother while leaving the banquet together. We then switch to the next scene where we see that Ruby is annoyed. As she's looking at herself in the mirror, she says to Caesar, what is this room? It's filled with mirrors. How did you know a place like this existed here? Is there a spy inside the palace too? Upon hearing this statement, Cesar responds, Did you know, Ruby? This place is similar to that garden you said you received as a gift. King Pianol had this room specially made for his queen, who couldn't let go of her dancing days. Even though it reeks of heathenish taste, 
it's still quite the show of love, don't you think? King Pianol should have been born a commoner. He couldn't even give his beloved daughter any claim to the throne. Honestly, if he'd had the intention to be a proper king, he wouldn't have brought in a queen like that. He wouldn't have done things that would drag his royal power through the mud, nor would he be trembling in fear of your young husband. Upon hearing this response, Ruby questions her brother about what his point is. She also starts trembling while holding the flower garlands that Isaac gave her. Sisar notices Ruby trembling. He then gets close to her and states to her that her wants her to live as a queen, not just in some backwater kingdom. Whether it's a glass garden or a room of mirrors, everything here is just a cheap imitation of things much better. Caesar further hugs his sister and tells her that there's only one place where she should be queen. He adds that it's in the kingdom he will build and that their father probably doesn't have long to live. Upon hearing this statement, Ruby pushes her brother away. She also gives him an angry look and questions him about why would she. This reaction shocks Caesar and makes him flinch. He then calls out to Ruby and mentions to her that she must be confused right now. However, Ruby disagrees with him and replies, The one who's confused is you, brother. Normally, by now, you would have raised your hand against me, but just because we kissed, even your gaze has changed. And what? A queen? Are you seriously telling me to be your wife now? Since when have you looked at me like that? This response stuns Cesar, and he confirms with Ruby if she's questioning him about since when has he looked at her like that. He also asks her about how could she not know. Cesar further grabs Ruby's hand and states to her that there's no times for this. He adds that they'll talk while they're on the move. As Cesar is dragging Ruby away, Ruby questions him about what does he mean by on the move and where are they going all of a sudden. Cesar turns around to tell Ruby that they're leaving here on a ship he prepared in advance and going back to their home. Ruby asks her brother if he's saying he wants to smuggle her out of here now. She also questions him about if he has forgotten where they are. She adds that this isn't even Romana, and he's talking like that's even possible. Cesar reassures Ruby not to worry. He adds that by the time they leave this place, it'll already be up in flames. Ruby asks Cesar what is he talking about. She adds that the least he could do is tell her what's going on if he wants her to go with him. Ruby also starts to wonder about what kind of plan did he come up with that he's so confident in. She further is aware that if what Cesar said is true, then that means they'll be out of here and on a ship at Elmas Port, which means that he set something up that will keep all of Arendelle distracted. Ruby wonders what could that possibly be. As the thunderstorm begins outside, Cesar mentions to Ruby that soon the monsters attracted by the smell of the demonic stone will swarm in. This statement surprises Ruby. She also starts to recall about the discussion that Caesar had earlier with one of his men and wonders if it could be that comment from before. Caesar then tells Ruby that he doesn't want to put her in danger too, so they should get out of here. Upon hearing this statement, Ruby slaps her brother's hand away. She also disagrees with him. This reaction shocks Caesar. Ruby then states to Caesar that she has no intention of leaving this place, so why would she go? This statement makes Caesar chuckle. He also replies, Is it because of him? Are you letting your heart waver over that wretched flower crown? Again, how many times do I have to tell you? That guy doesn't truly love you. The only thing people see in you is your father's triple crown and the power that comes with his gold. I've told you this so many times. Upon hearing this response, Ruby interrupts her brother and confirms with him about if he's saying that the only one who truly loves her is him. Cesar agrees with Ruby. As he touches her on the cheeks, he adds that in this world, the only ones who can understand them and love them the most are each other. Ruby disagrees with her brother and tells him that he's wrong. This disagreement surprises Cesar. Ruby also smacks away Cesar's hand and mentions to him that what he calls love is nothing but a dirty obsession. Upon hearing this statement, Cesar asks Ruby, what does she mean? Ruby responds, Brother, any time something didn't go your way, you raised your hand against me without hesitation, and on top of that, you even tried to sell me off to other guys. This response shocks Caesar. He also starts to remember about how his sister was married off to many other guys. 
Caesar then explains to Ruby that this is something she might not fully understand yet. That's why it happened. Ruby replies, You can never call that love, brother. Do you know when I felt the happiest? Have you ever once considered my feelings or what I might be going through? If you truly loved me, instead of raising your hand to hit me, you should have empathized with me pain and tears and embraced me, and you should never have forced me to do things I hated. Do you understand now? The difference between you and Isaac? This response makes Caesar very sad. He also starts to recall about how his father said that, in return, he must never go against him, unless he wants Ruby to get sent back to the orphanage. Caesar then disagrees with Ruby and tries to explain himself. However, Ruby interrupts him and says, There's only one reason why I want to stay here, because I want to live happily, with my husband, who truly loves and cherishes me. Do you still think I'm just a naive kid with silly delusions? No? Well, no matter what anyone says, I can say this with absolute certainty. I truly love Isaac. So please, stop interfering and leave on your own. I will never let go of Isaac's hand, and I would rather die than go back to you. Upon hearing this statement, Caesar slaps Ruby across the face. This action makes Ruby grin. She also questions her brother if he wants her to tell him where the source of those ugly feelings he's harboring come from. She adds that he's showing his inferiority to her husband, Isaac. He's jealous of someone who, without any effort, possesses everything, noble blood, a knight's crest, even a shining throne. Caesar mentions to Ruby to shut up. However, Ruby doesn't listen and questions him about if he gets it. She adds that when he's with her, he's in his most pathetic state. Upon hearing this statement, Caesar states to Ruby to shut up once again. Ruby doesn't listen again and further shouts out that if he tries to take her by force, she'll curse him for the rest of his life. She will sacrifice her soul to drag everything he has, his entire life, down to the depths of hell. This statement stuns Caesar. As the mirrors around them start to break, Ruby then shouts at Caesar to just try it. This statement makes Caesar punch Ruby and yell at her to shut up. Once he's done letting his anger out, we see that Ruby is sitting down with her head down, all bruised up. The mirror behind her is also completely shattered from Caesar's punch. Meanwhile, as Caesar's staring at the broken mirror behind Ruby, he agrees with her statement. He adds that he must look pathetic right now. Suddenly, Caesar realizes that someone has entered the room. He turns around to see who it is and realizes that it's Isaac. Isaac then rushes towards Caesar and stabs him in the chest. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here?